welcome to Sunset Hills United Presbyterian Church. It is a joy to have you here worshiping with us this second Sunday of Advent. Announcements for the benefit of the body of Christ this day. Thank you so much to everyone who baked for yesterday's Deacon's Bake Sale and for everyone who worked so hard yesterday. It was a wonderful success. Oh my goodness, the line for the cookies went all the way down to the preschool. It was really extraordinary. So thank you to our deacons for that awesome tradition. Other announcements today following worship, there will be a Christian education meeting, but that will happen after the cookie decorating. And so, um, Taylor, I believe, do you want to come up and make your announcement about what we're up to today? Good morning. Good morning. So today we are going to be doing cookie decorating. There's two different types of cookies. There's uniced star cookies, and then you might recognize the circular white cookies. They're from Eat Park, so they're the same exact Eat Park cookies, just without the icing. So you can go downstairs, make your own smiley cookie, make your own star cookie. They're on the four front tables, so just pick a spot and go there. We also have um, goods from Sarah Jane and Luke and hot chocolate as well. So just head downstairs and just letting everybody know with all the kids, we will be dismissing Children's Church from Finley Hall. I'm going to be bringing the kids downstairs, getting them started before everybody comes down. So just to let everybody know. Great. Now, one moment there, Taylor. So today we have cookies and cocoa yes. decorating our cookies. Yes. They're provided by Eaton Park. Yes. And then what's happening next week? Next week we're making ornaments for all of the people that can't make it in person. So just come down and we're going to be shipping them off the same day. So on Monday, next week, we're going to be sending them off. Okay, so next Sunday, stay after worship for ornament making for um, shut-ins and folks who can't make it to worship. Yes. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Taylor. And the uh, sweater competition last week was fantastic. Congratulations to Dick Fleming on winning <laughs> the sweater competition. On December 18th is our Christmas festival from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. It will be contained within Finley Hall. And outside Finley Hall, right outside in the parking lot, there will be two food trucks, Pittsburgh crepes and a meatball truck. And so we invite you to join us on Sunday, December 18th from 4 to 7 for the festival. The Reverend Dr. Bill Gracie will be once again at St. Nicholas. And so please come and join us for that. December 22nd at 7 o'clock p.m. we will have our longest night Christmas service. This is a service of lament for those for whom the holiday season is a difficult time of year, who may be experiencing depression or loneliness or grief. They are invited to come and join us that evening, December 22nd, for the longest night worship service. Are there any announcements that I may have missed? Friends, let us remember why we are here, that we are here to glorify our God in Christ. Let us worship together.
Here's God's promise of peace from Isaiah 11. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the asp's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Let us pray. Faithful God, give us your peace. Reconcile us with all our enemies in the peace of Jesus Christ our Lord. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
impatience, idolatries, and lack of compassion that form our confession this day. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Yet in mercy, God will forgive us and renew us. Let us pray together the prayer of confession. Gracious and welcoming God, have mercy on your people. We confess we do not believe in your incarnation. We do not heed your word each day in all that we say and do. We do not see our neighbors, families, and friends as beloved children you have made. In your mercy, forgive us, for we repent of our ways and look to your power to heal us and raise us up so that at the last you will gather us to you and give us peace. Amen. Now let us have a time of silent, private, personal confession. The reign of God has come near. The repentant will be judged with the righteous. You are forgiven. Be filled with hope, believing in the power of the risen Christ to bring you to new life. Rejoice and believe. Amen. <laughs>
with the children. We feel comfortable doing so. Come forward for the time with the children. We're going to stand over here today. Hey, buddy. He shall slay the wicked. 
Righteousness shall be the girdle of his waist, and faithfulness the girdle of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The suckling child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as an ensign to the peoples. Him shall the nations seek, and his dwellings shall be glorious. And our gospel reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair, and a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruit that befits repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand. And he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with the unquenchable fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. unintentionally become an art history sermon series. And also, every time I read this passage, I think to myself, this is probably why John the Baptist wasn't voted most likely to succeed in high school. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight this day, and indeed every day, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I witnessed the moment the bug fell into the spider's web. I was washing the dishes. It was nighttime. The window was to my left. It was backlit by the porch light. And the bug had just been on the outside, inching its way along the upper window pane. And I'd seen it, and I'd kind of been watching it out of the corner of my eye. And there was this moment where the bug gave way, fell collapsed into the unnoticed web below. I gasped. Yes, I'm that kind of person. I gasped and called for my husband. Ethan! Ethan! The bug! The bug! I yelled. He came, and what followed was almost an hour of the two of us watching, observing the bug's struggle. It was a goner. There was no saving it. We talked about it. I asked him, do you think there's any way we can get that bug out of that web? And we wondered, yes, I'm that person. And we wondered together, and then it became clear, no, this wasn't happening. The bug was going to die. And so we watched the little bug wriggle in the web, and we watched the spider make her little way to him. We watched as the bug got tied up in the web, and then we watched 
as the spider sucked out the bug's guts. <laughs> it was like watching David Attenborough documentaries live. It was amazing. The food chain, life's cruelty unfolding right there outside our kitchen window. And it reminded us of that time when we were standing at our bedroom window and looked outside and saw that there was a hawk dismantling a squirrel on a pole right above our car. And it also reminded us of that time when our cat left what was once upon a time a chipmunk under our dining room table. It's the circle of life and it disgusts us all. Thus, it is a miracle to look upon images like this. This is one of Edward Hicks's 60 plus paintings entitled The Peaceable Kingdom. Have any of you seen this painting before? Some of you have? Yeah. This artist, the artist Edward Hicks, he was a Quaker pastor who became somewhat obsessed with today's Old Testament reading, Isaiah 11. Hicks was self-taught, and he used paintings as a means of devotion. He would paint as a way of praying. And he painted Isaiah 11, again, 60 times, painting it over and over and over again as an illustration of his desire for the Isaiah 11 world, where the wolf will live with a lamb, the calf and the lion will feed together, the cow and the bear will graze together. Now anyone who's ever seen a spider devour its prey knows what Isaiah writes for us today is miraculous. What we read in Isaiah is a world that's inconceivable, inconceivable, impossible. Peace like this in the animal kingdom no way. And yet, as we look at his painting, there is something even more impossible in this world than peace in the animal kingdom. Consider the spider again. She weaves her web outside my kitchen window for survival. All carnivores do. They do what they have to do to survive. When we watch nature on PBS and inevitably the lion chases the zebra, the lion isn't just like a bad guy. The lion needs to eat. He chases the zebra because he needs lunch. It is for survival reasons alone that they kill. Consider now humans. Consider the horrific webs humanity weaves, though not for physical survival. Consider the impossibility of peace amongst us as people. Consider this week the horrors we humans will approach as we approach the 10th anniversary of Sandy Hook. Do you believe it's been 10 years already? Humanity lost 20 elementary school students that day, 10 years ago. Sandy Hook did not happen because someone needed to survive. Sandy Hook did not happen for any good reason. There is no reason in the world that can legitimize what happened. If we were to ask God, why? Why did this happen? I think we can all agree there's no reason that God could give that would satisfy us. Humanity's violence continues. As Tim Faco said a few weeks ago, mass shootings are reported to us now with the casualty of a car wreck on 279. Events like what happened at Sandy Hook are permitted to happen again in Parkland, Florida, again at the Tree of Life Synagogue, again in Uvalde, Texas. And we get frustrated because nothing ever changes except that our world becomes more immune to it. There is something more impossible than a spider becoming a vegetarian. It is a world where humans stop destroying each other. That is ultimately the world Isaiah offers. It is also ultimately the world that Edward Hicks paints as he looks forward to the day of Christ's final return. Now most of these paintings by Hicks, they are of the animals in Isaiah chapter 11. 
Occasionally, however, as in the case of this painting, Hicks will include <coughs> images of prayed for reconciliation between peoples. In this particular painting, he is showing his dream of a schism being, I'm trying to take a look at it, there's over 60 paintings, each one's a little different. In this one, he is dreaming of peace between the Americans, the new settlers, the colonists, and the First Nationers, the first people to live in America. In another painting, he paints his dream of a schism between the Quaker factions being healed. He shows two men signing a document together, forming a truce between their two Quaker denominations. Hicks takes the troubles of his time, such as what we see here in the background on the left, he takes the troubles of his time and imagines what these troubles would look like on the day of Christ's return. He imagines what would happen if Jesus returned in this situation. If Isaiah 11 happened today, and here he imagines peace between two people groups. Now what would happen if Edward Hicks was painting this today? Perhaps such a painting today would show weapons being melted down for use in infrastructure. Perhaps such a painting would show Donald Trump and Kamala Harris shaking hands. Perhaps such a painting would show two divorced parents cooperating in co-parenting their children. Perhaps such a painting would show families making the effort to be patient with one another over the holiday table. Like I said, this world, this world is impossible to us. More impossible than the idea of these animals living together peaceably in the peaceable kingdom. That's why Hicks comes back to this subject again and again. He knows this is impossible, but he knows it will happen because of Jesus. He's a Quaker pastor, remember? He knows that this will happen someday because of Jesus. In Jesus, the peaceable kingdom is certain. Like Hicks, we as Christians today need to find ways to remind ourselves of the certainty of Jesus' peaceable kingdom. Hicks became a little eccentric in his way of reminding himself with these paintings. He needed his art to bring him back to the hope of Jesus again and again and again. I have recently learned that what I need when I am struggling to get along with my family, I have brothers. I struggle to get along with my family. It comes with the brother territory. Um, when I find myself struggling with what I see on the news, I learned that I need to journal. Journaling is my way of praying, of talking with God. I pray best in writing. We all need to find the ways that bring us back again and again and again to the peaceable kingdom of Jesus Christ our Lord. This may be something that is possible for you in daily devotional readings if you're a visual learner. It may be if you are an audio learner, if you learn best through hearing, it may be good for you to listen to the Bible on CD or however you listen to things. It may be that Bible study is what brings you back to Jesus, to Jesus' peace, if you're the kind of person who likes to think aloud with others. The point is, every one of us, like Edward Hicks, every one of us is different. Every one of us has our own way of growing closer to Jesus, of being reminded of the peace that is to come. The point is, we need to structure our lives such that we are reminding ourselves of the peace that is to come. We need that. One of the ways that we exercise our certain hope that we have in Jesus is by coming together, first Sunday of the month, to this table. The communion table is a foretaste of the world that is to come when Christ returns. It is a foretaste of the world where there will be no more 11 o'clock news nightmare fuel. There will instead in the world to come be a feast People from every tribe, every race, every nation will gather together for a meal so delicious it'll put our church Thanksgiving dinner to shame, if you can imagine such a thing. Jesus will be the host of that meal. We will laugh. We will have hearts 
as full of joy as our bellies are filled with food, we will have peace. We will have Hicks's way of looking forward to that day. Today, our way of looking forward is through this sacrament. May the bread that we break and the cup that we drink fill us with the hope of Jesus Christ's advent in our lives and in our world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us declare what we believe using the Apostles' Creed found in our bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, Elder Jody Colby is invited forward for our minute for mission on the Christmas Joy Offering.
gratuities to them. Please look at them. If you can, give. I promise you, there is great joy in giving. And if we all do a little, there is, adds up to a lot. Thank you.
Barb was a member at Whitehall Presbyterian Church. She um, also graduated from high school with my parents. She passed away yesterday morning of brain cancer after I believe it was a 10-year battle. And so we lift up her two daughters and her grandchildren and her family in prayer. I'm going to come around with the microphone for other prayer concerns and prayer joys. God is good. God hears our prayers. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Holy Lord, as Hagar declared in the wilderness, you are a God who hears. We give you thanks this day that you are the God who hears us. You hear the contents of our hearts and our minds, and you hear us as we call out to you. God, we give you thanks for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who is the author of Advent, whose coming we look forward to, and who is the one that brings us a peace that passes understanding. Lord, we give thanks this day giving prayers of thanksgiving for healing, for transplants that are successful, for heart doctors that say, we don't want to see you again for a year, for all of the good things that you bring into our lives, those that we see and those that we don't even know about. And we pray silently now our personal, private prayers of thanksgiving. To you be the honor and the glory and the praise, O God. Lord, even as we have a cup that runneth over with blessings, we have concerns that we bring before you. We pray for Natalie that you would grant her your healing touch as she faces breast cancer. We pray for Matt Faco for healing. Lord, we pray this day for Harriet's friend and asking for miracles to happen there. We pray for Dave's mom, that she may be able to, to get home from St. Clair, and that this all may be a blessing for her. We pray for all those on our prayer list, 
and we lift up to you now silently our personal private prayers of intercession. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for those who are grieving. Particularly this day we pray for the family of Barb Ladley, that you would wrap your loving arms around them, that, dear Lord, we would give thanks for a life given to, the, to your service, even as Whitehall Church may not be able to gather together as a community as they once did. Lord, we give you thanks for her service to that congregation in your holy name. And God, we pray that you have received her as a beloved daughter, a beloved servant. Holy God, we lift up in prayer our sister church in Lichensa, Malawi, praying your blessing upon them. We pray this day for our mission co-workers, the Adamses, serving at the U.S.-Mexico border. And we pray for Pabatso, our world vision child in South Africa. God, we lift up before you all of the leaders of our communities, the leaders of our nation and leaders of this world, that they would listen for your still small voice and be humble before your throne. Guide us in this new week. Guide all that we think and say and do that in thought, word, and deed, we may be so blessed as to glorify you. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our tithes and our offerings are received in the back of the sanctuary by our treasurer, Mary Abbott. We can also give online at shopchurch.org. It's super simple. And you can also find on the website all kinds of information about Christmas and what is happening here at the church. Friends, let us say a prayer of dedication of our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Holy God, receive these, the gifts of our tithes and our offerings. May they be used for the sake of your glory and the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Let us rise as comfortably able for our response. Coming. 
With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Keep us faithful in your service, we pray, O oh God, until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. We pray this all in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death and the coming resurrection of our risen Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray that you would bless us as we come forward, that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive the gift that you have given us in this feast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The elders are invited to come forward, and the deacons, those who will be serving communion this day. If you want to pick up the cross that you will be using to serve. We will be partaking of communion today by coming forward. We will start with the back pews and come down the center aisle. You will go either to your right or to your left to our elders. Take the bread. Um, they may say to you, the body of Christ given for you. Your response may be, thanks be to God or amen. And then you partake of the bread there they will be giving you a piece of bread, COVID safety. And so you'll see they're wearing gloves and they will give you a piece of bread. After you partake of the bread, you go to the next elder who will give you the cup and they may say the blood of Christ shed for you. You can say amen or thanks be to God, drink, and then go to the next elder and put the empty cup in the basket and proceed down the side aisles back to your pew. Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Starting balcony and back rows, may come forward.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now, in, now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord and all God's children said, Amen. Let us stand as comfortably able for our closing hymn, Are You the One Who Is to Come? once again into our doors. Amen.